Artificial intelligence is not a substitute for human intelligence. It is a tool to amplify human creativity and ingenuity. Good morning to all the dignitaries, our respected professors and dear participants present at this auspicious gathering. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome on behalf of Computer Science and Engineering Department, National Institute of Technology, Raur Kela, who has clubbed all of us for the five days short term course on deep learning applications for smart cities. Deep learning in smart cities is a transformative approach that leverages artificial intelligence and advanced data analytics to enhance urban living. As we move toward the future, deep learning will continue to drive innovation in smart city development, ultimately improving the quality of life for urban populations. It is our honor to have all the esteemed dignitaries with us. I request you all to please take your seats on the dais. We are delighted to have our chief guest, Padma Shri Professor Shankar Kumar Pal from ISI Kolkata with us. I request the student coordinator to gift him with a token of appreciation. Now, we will humbly welcome our Honorable Director of NIT Rao Kela, Professor K. Uma Maheshwar Rao. We are grateful for the presence of respected Registrar of NIT Rao Kela, Professor Rohan Dhima. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to the respected Chairman and Head of the Department, Computer Science and Engineering, Professor Vibhu Dalta Sahu. Thank you all. So to begin this auspicious occasion, I invite the dignitaries to light the holy lamp. May this light shine as a beacon of inspiration and innovation, guiding us as we embark on this remarkable journey together. Thank you everyone. I request to take your seats on the dais. Moving ahead with the program, I would like to request the coordinator, Dr. Puneet Kumar Jain, to take the stage and address the audience. On behalf of the Computer Science Department, I am delighted to welcome our chief guest, Padma Sri Professor Sankar Kumar Paul, Respected Director Sir, Professor K. Mameswar Rao, Respected Registrar Sir, Professor Rohan Diman, Respected Chairman, HOD Computer Science Department, Professor Vivata Sahu, Respected Professors and dear participants. Deep learning applications are providing lot of solutions for various smart city challenges. This particular workshop is going to focus on various uh, invited talks and uh, the hands-on session in the uh, area of deep learning applications and its role for the smart city uh, challenges. I am spirited uh, with the knowing that uh, the enthusiasm of the participants to be at, to attend this particular event. There would be an inaugural uh, talk by Professor Pal following this inaugural session here only 
and then there would be a lot of expert talks from uh, the IITs, NITs and triple IITs. By this, I would like to thank all of you once again and I welcome uh, Chairman HOD Professor Bhubut Tasaut sir to address the audience. Very good morning to all those who are present. Our uh, respected Padmasri Professor uh, Sankar Pal, Honorable Professor K. Umamahasar Rao, Director NIT Rorkela, Professor Rohan Diman, Register NIT Rorkela, <coughs> Professor Sambit Bakshi, and Professor Puneet Jain, Coordinator of the Saturn course, esteemed faculty members, dear students, delegates, those who are present online and offline in this Saturn course and distinguished guest. I both honored and delighted to welcome you to this Saturn course on deep learning application on smart cities. This course actually brings the technocrats and the city planners together to over a brainstorming how the data which is generated in the smart city from various application and on various events can be put into use for the decision making with help of the deep learning. I hope the export talks which are arranged by our course coordinator will create an impact on the delegates so that can be motivated to take up the research in the area of application of deep learning in a smart city decision making. So in a smart city we need different decision has to be made, something to be delivered. If it is based on the data then it is the, uh, the domain or the AI is coming to assist the human being to take a decision that can have a value addition or a quality of service or a sustainable smart city. So I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to our participants, sponsors and organizing committee members and the student volunteers who have worked here. On behalf of department, I try to thank all the supports I got from the different agencies or different units of my institute who has come forward to help us in organizing this event. Thank you everyone uh, for gracing this occasion, your presence. Thank you all and welcome to this conference. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. Now I will request Director Professor K. Uma Maheshwar Rao to felicitate the Chief Guest Professor Shankar Kumar Pal. Thank you so much, sir. Now I will request Chairman Professor Vibhu Datta Sahu to felicitate the Director Professor K. Uma Maheshwar Rao. Thank you so much, sir. I will request Coordinator Dr. Puneet Kumar Jain to felicitate the Registrar Professor Rohan Thiman. Thank you, sir. I will request the coordinator, Dr. Sambit Bakshi, to felicitate the chairman, Professor Vibhu Dutta Sahu. Thank you, sir. Now I request the student coordinator to felicitate the coordinators, Dr. P.K. Jain and Dr. Sambit Bakshi. May I request the registrar, Professor Rohan Dhiman, to share a few words with us. Respected uh, dignitaries on the dais, Padam Shri Professor Paul, the chief guest for uh, today's short term course, Honorable Director NIT Raurkela, Professor Rao, Head of the Department Computer Science Engineering, uh, Professor B.D. Sahu, Coordinators for this uh, five day short term course, Professor uh, Sambit Bakshi and uh, Professor uh, Jain, all the esteemed faculty colleagues of the department. Delegates, 
from uh, outside the institute, students from NIT Raukela, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me proud privilege to be part of uh, this uh, inaugural ceremony. And uh, if you see the title of this uh, short term course, and uh, I request you to please keep in mind that I am from uh, life science. So deep learning application for smart cities, if you see in fragmentation, I know everything. The meaning of deep, I know learning application smart cities. But if you see in coherence, so I'll not be the better person or judge to uh, let you know like what this means as far as deep learning uh, applications are concerned. But you know during election time uh, every party releases the list of star campaigners and if you are following a sport so there are star players. So the same way in our institute also there are departments and there are star departments. So computer science engineering is one of the star department. Why star department? Because we categorize department based on how much IRG they are generating, how many students they are getting admission in those departments, how many patents or publications you know they are doing. So in a way, you know how much uh, important this department is and how uh, important these departments to our JE aspirants also because we see what are their first preferences as far as getting admission into any of the tech institutes are concerned. So that is why uh, computer science engineering is one of our uh, star department. And we are happy that uh, this is one of the short term course that they are conducting to disseminate the knowledge and the expertise whatever this department has. And to our uh, delegates and also to uh, chief guests that uh, this uh, institute has a uh, long legacy. Uh, it was uh, established in 1961 as a regional uh, engineering college. And in 2002 and 2003 with the act of parliament this was established as, as uh, one of the National Institute of Technology and in 2007 it gained the tag of National Institute of Importance. And now we have 31 NITs and also IEST Shippur in this uh, uh, NIT system. And um, NIT Raurkela is one of the oldest and also one of the biggest. Uh, in terms of our faculty strength which is uh, sanctioned is 485 and now close to uh, 400 faculties or 380 faculties uh, that is in position currently. And uh, based on the student strength if you see so we have uh, more than 8000 students spread across uh, 20 different departments and these departments uh, there are newly established departments as well like you know earth and atmospheric food process engineering and also we have life science planning and architecture so there are there are a wide variety of uh, different uh, departments which are already established here and if you see the new education policy where there is a you know uh, cumulative uh, texture and flavor of different departments which will augment the, the growth of the students. So I think so we are also in line with that we have already implemented and with various different departments so we are also uh, you know uh, planning to start the center for integrated teacher education uh, programs as well. So um, based on uh, all the expertise what we have so these uh, different uh, courses or the short term courses these are very important and uh, based on those particular courses because the expertise, whatever our faculties they have and the tremendous amount of uh, work what they do. So it is very important to uh, disseminate that and uh, to uh, serve the society that what we generally do. And uh, once again, uh, I congratulate all the coordinators that the, whatever the objectives they have, uh, you know, finalized or established as far as this short term course is concerned, that will be fruitful in next uh, five days. We are all here and hope that uh, your stay will be comfortable. And you will you will uh, relish and also cherish the whatever uh, the environment and also the atmosphere and also the vibrance whatever uh, the atmosphere we have uh, in uh, NIT Raurkela. So uh, I uh, once again uh, uh, extend my best wishes to the coordinators and also the, to the whole department that uh, it will meet the objectives uh, whatever they have planned for next uh, five days. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your encouraging remarks. Professor Shankar Kumar Pal, may we kindly request you to share some words of wisdom and inspiration to grace the event. Dear uh, Director Rao, other dignitaries, and my beloved students, uh, 
very good morning to all of you. Now, before I, I make a few comments about AI, deep learning, etc., let me remind you that today is the 11th September and it is World Brotherhood Day. In 1893, Swami Vivekananda delivered his that great speech in, in uh, Chicago today, 11th September. It is a World Brotherhood Day. So it's a very auspicious day for Indians and the whole world. So I, just I thought be, better I remind you to all of our young uh, students here. And IIT, NIT, Raurkala is not new to me. First time I visited, I think, in, uh, when I was 43 or 44, just after receiving Bhattagar Prize and ITP Fellow, when I returned from USA, I think Professor P.K. Das, that time, he visited my institute on Saturday. Saturday is closed, but he had an understanding that usually uh, good professors, they work on just Saturday also. So I told him that, why did you come today? I am, uh, well, I know, I know that I'm in Calcutta and all uh, good professors everywhere, they work on Saturday also. So I just took a chance and then I uh, asked somebody that he said, hey, he, he's at home. Is a cubicle. So that's why we are started. And then after I came many times. So this uh, souvenir that you have given, I have got at home uh, many. Uh, so typical this chakra, uh, chakra. Uh, so whenever I come, this is from Odisha, and particularly from this part of the country, <laughs> country wherever I have given one. And I, my last visit was, I think, in 2011. That was a student fest student fest, that was one, and then I saw my, uh, in the evening I was roaming, then I saw my picture is everywhere. So I took some picture also, that at least uh, all celebrities picture are around, na? political man, etc. Somehow I see that my picture one. So that was my one, now again after 10 years, or 11 years, when I was requested, I was, I was a little bit hesitant, because going to, uh, I enjoy, because Uriya people and Telugu people, they just somehow, they give me very respect, I don't know why. And they are, have teachers and students that Guru Shishya Parampara is, is very much. So I told to my Bengali students also, they, sometimes they don't like this, but I tell it everywhere, that in my India, I see the Telugu people and Uriya people, wherever I go, somehow I get a, a different kind of, of feelings from them. And they say, that my Guru, that Guru, that Guru, Etc. That's a very good sign. So when Swamit called me in the morning, I was a little hesitant because the train journey. Last time when I came, I was returning by first class. And now let me tell you one story. That one. First time when I was coming, as usual, uh, you paid me uh, first class. So in the compartment, some guy was carrying some beaker and other things. He was so we were too early. So, interestingly, he asked me, sir, would you take some drink? I said, drink? How? Well, I have. I said, then how can you drink? Well, no, I have some chemistry beaker, not beaker. <laughs> so, he took it from that. I said, uh, what do you do? He said, no, I, I supply all these elements in uh, Odisha and other things. So, I went to College Square. From College Square, College Street Markets, I bought it. So then he said, sir, what do you do? I, I said, I am a, I'm a professor. Oh, so that means nowadays professors get high, just high salary, right? To, to avail a first class ticket. I was so, <laughs> what I'll say that, what is his opinion about the professors? He has mixed up the professor from undergraduate and professor from Indian Statistics Institute. So I told him, no, no, no I am from Indian Statistics Institute. Yes, we are, we are all highly paid. And, but anyway, my salary, this 10 ticket will be paid by the NIT around Kerala. So these are few, yeah, yeah. so that's why when Shambhit asked me, last time when I was traveling in the plane, the TT and that guy was taking drink in the night. I say, what are you doing? So, well, sorry, please quiet sleep. We will not disturb. But uh, when you say not disturb, that means you are disturbing. And the morning, so that's why I was hesitating. That was about this one. Now, let's come to deep learning. In Bengali, I call it Hare Hare Chena. I say, I know him, Hare Hare Chini. Hare Chini means deep planning. That's what that, that, now I, I just point. 
And also I coined the term in 2018, while I was working on MTech student, we published a paper, it's a shallow learning. That means the normal learning, because otherwise how can you contrast? Deep learning means learning in depth in different stages. Now, as I mentioned, we are trying to reduce the different gap between human intelligence and machine intelligence. It's not so easy, but there are certain tasks where AI should be useful for helping human to make decision. That's much I can say. But look at the, the way it is now going on. It's basically Americans' buzzword. Uh, my age is 73. I've been working from when I was 24 plus. First March 1975, I joined after doing MTech. So uh, in India, you will not get many people at my age grade who have started working on the basic subject of AI for, for about 49 years. So I know the subject very well. I can challenge anybody in the country that we started working in pattern recognition. That time, no book, nothing. I, was, I had an MTech degree from radio physics and electronics. It's basically electronics and radio physics. Mother's subject, but somehow I didn't like the subject. So I, I came to India Chinese Institute and Professor Dr. Majundar asked me to write a proposal half an hour abstract. I sent it to CSI. So I got it, CSI, before my result published. But, but at that, that time there is no phone call. So a telegram came, it's selected, but we need transcripts. So we are the first batch, BTEC MTEC, after BSc honors. So we had to meet our registers, they were very nice people. Today's, although the registers not at this register, other registers, oh. But that time register came with a cyclostyle mark C22 of us. They gave us, we Xeroxed it, attested, sent it. I joined on first March. No book, nothing. That's how we learned pattern recognition. In after 70, I went to Imperial College, I learned image processing. So when I studied image processing in India only, Professor Rosenfield worked in Maryland. When I started in pattern recognition, only in TIFR, PVS Rao, speech recognition, or Narsimhan, formal language theory. That's all. NRS started later on. Dikshatul, these are the people. And image processing when I started in England, nobody's working. Abdul Kalam, who is the professor, uh, Nobel Prize in physics, la, he was working, but he's not even processing cosmology images he was dealing with. So I started working from then on. So 70s, 80s, then I saw in 80s when I went to Butler and Maryland for full right, that time it term came AI, machine learning. And Professor Latvich had first told me, who has passed away at the age of 76, uh, at the age of 96 three years back, he told me that Americans love to give new names all, always. So your pattern negotiation is no more a interesting subject because you measurement, you extract feature, that's not the way human mind works. So let us call expert system. You go to a medical doctor, they do not uh, do the way you make decision. They have some knowledge in their mind, they matching, they make a decision. If you go to a law interpreter, you tell your problems in terms of pattern, or case, they have previous cases, they're batching, adaptation. So, so that time expression was a bad word. And pattern got new name, machine learning. That's why pattern guy, machine learning guy, they fight always. Pattern guy, we call it classifier, they call it retrieval. We call it feature selection, they call it dimension reduction. We call it uh, subset selection, they call it data condensation. Same thing but different names. They all are based on confusion matrix. Then after 90, so neural networks you have seen, after seven, eight years, it died. AI could not survive, because why? We do not have data. We do not have computer. We do not have software. In my institute, we started AI course after I returned from USA. But after three to four years, we do not get any student because no job. So subject died. But if you look at the history, 1947, Alan Turing from UK, he gave his lecture in London Mathematical Society. Just you find the Google search, 
where he mentioned that what we need is a machine that can learn from environment. And that gave the birth of the concept of intelligent machine. That gave the birth of the concept of machine learning. That means learning from data, learning from patterns. That's a machine learning. Now again, after 10 years, you have seen data mining. Then you see a big data. Now we are talking deep science, data science, data science. Everything is data science. Wherever you go, everybody talks data science. I passed one month in Cambridge. There I am seeing the same thing. One year MSc course, they are doing AI, AI ML, AI ML. They do not know what is AI ML. They know only some of the software tools. They have two weeks, <coughs> in a week, two days class. Most of the year, not, I'm talking about Cambridge, Oxford, or Imperial. I'm talking about other colleges in the world. It's not a good sign. Good sign. We are talking excessively. In my country also, it has necessity. But my request to young researchers, I would also mention in my talk at the last, that's what I'm telling in the last five years. If you want to know deep learning, you have to know shallow learning. If you want to know shallow learning, you have to know neural network learning. If you have to know neural network learning, you have to know pattern recognition, mother subject. If you do not know that, then again after seven to eight years, what we saw in case of neural network, subject will collapse. No job, nothing, etc. because we expected too much during neural network also that we, we will solve all problems by neural network. We didn't contribute to the basic architecture. We didn't develop the science, but we expected too much from multilayer perceptron and other things. So I hope learning from that previous because machine learning means learning from previous experience. So I, we have learned from 80s, 90s, what happened with neural networks. I hope this will not recur. But at the same time, I will encourage that you cannot say no what is going on one. Because this is one way of handling data, and now you are surrounded by data. So in order to mine that data, in order to interpret that data, you need some kind of tools which are called AI tools. Starting from pattern recognition, classification, feature selection, learning, reasoning, all those things. Just like one human intelligence, we need adaptability, robustness, ruggedness, learning, uncertainty management, speed, that's all. So this will, I will conclude and I hope this deep learning for smart cities, because smart cities means, I was told that uh, your uh, route color is in the list of smart cities. Yes, I was impressed yesterday, I think, very clean city, etc. So these things are required, there are something in machinery required to make one. And since you have now available data, that is our strength. When we started working in 75, we did not have data. We have to generate data to publish in ITB transaction. But now we have abundant data. We do not know which one is true or not. That's why the big data, one of the bees is conformity to fact, veracity. We do not know the conformity to fact or not. If it is a misleading fact, that data mining will give a worse result also. So it's a good that you, are, you have now enough data. So we should capitalize that, that data. So every tool has a limitation. So deep learning has some merit, I will explain today also, merits of certain problems. But don't think that you put it in everywhere, then it will be a disaster, okay? So with this, I wish you all uh, good wishes today and your uh, big, uh, your success for this deep learning workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It means a lot to hear about your knowledgeable thoughts. Now, I humbly invite our Honorable Director, Professor K. Uma Maheshwar Rao to share his valuable thoughts. The most distinguished guest we have today on desk Padmasri Shankar Pan from uh, ISI Kolkata, and other dignitaries, my faculty colleagues on the desk, off the desk, and my dearest students. We are really privileged to have uh, Sri Padmasri Shankar Pan during the 
Amrit Kaal series of lectures which are happening in all the institutions across the country. And probably NIT Raurkela is making the beginning of the Amrit Kaal the lecture series <coughs> with the eminent uh, researcher Padma Shri Shankar Paal. And as far as the deep learning is concerned, having heard him, I don't dare speak anything. I reserve my comments about that one because uh, I'm not an expert in uh, artificial intelligence and nor machine learning. All that I know is that uh, as a researcher in mining engineering, we generated lots of data from underground. Means during uh, 80s, 90s, the data which we have generated from the various transducers underground, particularly the coal mines, because coal mines, the moment you hear about that one, people think about the accident prone, but then let me tell you that uh, less number of accidents happen in mines than on the road. But still, right, uh, I was one of the, the project investigators in trying to find out in all the Asansol area and various other coal mines. And we have generated hordes of lakhs of data, but then we were not knowing what to do with this data because interpreting the data itself was so humongous. Today, had this been there during that time, probably it could have really translated into some useful data for the to avoid possible accidents in the mines. So now only uh, having heard uh, Professor Paul saying all that, now I realized that. Fundamental. First thing is that there is no limit to the application of artificial intelligence. Going back to the expert system, going back to the this one, uh, the neural networks, and going back to the pattern recognition and all that one. And two things I'm carrying forward. One is that this is the time when we have got to have this strong footing in trying to spread the application of artificial intelligence and uh, uh, this machine learning to every field, because. India, for whatever the reasons, right? We have large population, and we are not very behind, far too behind some of the nations. I still believe that one. And in medical field, because today I find that Hyderabad is flooded with NRIs, and all of them have come for the medical reasons and then medical the consultations only, and there are thousands and thousands of very good corporate hospitals and then developing, generating lots of data. Lots of data and then only thing is that a scientist which can, he can synthesize this available data and see that the, the future generations will not suffer as much as the past generations have suffered and then the challenges are more, right? Globe is no more in the warming stage. It has already come to the, the boiling stage and then even in September, Right, September here in Raurkala, which is supposed to be the, the present, the beginning of the present climate, we are still sweating, sweating and it is very uh, hot and humid also. So there is some change in that one. So now there is no, what I want to conclude here is that there is no area where artificial intelligence cannot really find its place, a respectable place. Engineering, biological sciences, social sciences, and the medical sciences and every field, it is there. And why not India become the spearhead that one? And then why not NIT Raurkela take the lead in trying to hone the requirements of trying to learn the fundamentals? Today should be the, the auspicious day as what Professor Paul has stated that it's the, the message which Swami Vivekananda has given in Chicago and then the message which we got from Professor Paul. Right. From this message, we move forward and trying to strengthen the Western Orissa and taking the responsibility, NIT Raurakela, and trying to teach everyone here the applications from the grassroots levels, right from the neural networks to pattern recognition to various other, whatever the fundamentals that are required. Let us have the strong fundamentals, not the superficial peripheral applications of that one. Let us create that one and then let us create the uh, knowledge hub in the Western Orissa and create a required skills in this particular area. And then without taking much of the time, right, we are honored. We are honored to have a stalwart like Professor Paul here on this day. And then, uh, lastly, I am very, very sorry, extremely sorry for, the, for having kept 
uh, Professor Paul waiting for me because there was another. These are all the reasons. I am not trying to give the reasons, but then I am extremely sorry. I owe my apologies to you for keeping you waiting for this one. And I owe apologies to all of you for keeping you waiting for me. Unfortunately, I told Sambit Bakshi also, three conferences all at one time, half an hour difference. Somewhere we spill over the time, right? Order of thanks can also go a little out of the bounds in the time. And that's where I got really stuck up. And uh, further, nevertheless, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. Thank you very much. And then I only want the youngsters, the message is yours. Don't learn the superficially. Learn deep to the roots. And then just say, if you learn it, you will be very strong and very strong. And then sharing the knowledge, deep learning and sharing the knowledge. Right, with this message, I wish you all the real success. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for enriching us with your intellectual pursuits. Now I request the coordinator, Dr. Sambit Bakshi, to deliver a vote of thanks. Honorable dignitaries on the dais, Padma Shri Professor Shankar Kepal sir, Professor K. Uma Masha Rao sir, Director, NIT Rao Kela, Professor Rohan Dhiman, Registrar, NIT Rao Kela, Professor Bibhuda Tashao, Chairman and HOD Computer Science, and Professor Punit, and all the dignitaries present here, all the uh, participants present here, and the participants who are listening us online, all the people who have come together to make this, at least beginning till now, of this short-term course a successful, I wish them a warm thanks and I request them to attend all the five days program where we will be looking into different aspects of deep learning. And without taking much time, I would thank our sponsors, TIH, IIT Patna, HDFC Bank, and IEEE Kolkata section young professionals. I thank them for financial and other supports, technical supports. Thank you so much everyone for joining. After the, I request everyone to proceed for the snacks. After the snacks, we will be gathering here only for listening to the keynote speech of Professor Sankar Kepal uh, in an 10 minutes or 15 minutes on his topic is granular mining in video analytics, shallow to deep learning. Thank you so much, everyone. Welcome, all of you. Now, we will start the inaugural talk by Professor Paul on the topic granular mining in video analytics shallow to deep learning. But before that, I am honored to read a short biography of Professor Paul. Professor Sankar Kumar Paul is a distinguished scientist and former director of Indian Statistical Institute. Currently, he is a National Science Chair, Government of India, and the president of Indian Statistical Institute, as well as its emeritus professor. He is also an AICT nominator, AICT Distinguished Chair Professor and Serb National Science Chair, Government of India. He received a PhD in Radio Physics and Electronics from Indian Statistical Institute and University of Kolkata in 1979 and another PhD in Electrical Engineering along with DIC from Imperial College, University of London in 1982. He became a full professor in 1987, distinguished scientist in 1998, the director in 2005, and the president in 2012-22. He has held several positions at including IIT Jodhpur, Australian Universities, University of California, University of Maryland, College Park, NASA Johnson Space Center, Houston, Texas, and in US Naval Research Laboratory. He has received the 1990 S.S. Bhatnagar Prize. In 2013, he was conferred 
Padma Sri, one of the highest civilian award in India by President of India. 2009, Khwarizmi International Award from the President of Iran. 2000-2001, Fiki Award. 1993, Vikram Sarabhai Research Award. 1993, NASA Tech Brief Award and many other awards in this line. Professor Paul is also a fellow of IEEE, the World Academy of Science, International Association for Pattern Recognition, and all the four national academies for science, engineering, and India. There are many more numbers, many more awards, and the number of publications with the name of Professor Paul. By this, I would like to call Professor Paul on uh, to deliver your talk, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning again. Uh, the talk title, as you see, is a little bit uh, interdisciplinary. However, I will uh, I will try to make it as much as possible lucid so that you can understand. And as usual, I do not use equation or any mathematics also. So I will go by examples and uh, some results, concepts. That's how I have prepared my talk. It's about 50 minutes talk. I'm not planning. I will explain what is granular computing. Granules. See, when I'm seeing this audience, I can see some young lady, some young boys are there, some middle-aged people are there, some young people. So this is called granular. And I'm not looking at the individual audience. Just at a glance, I can see Ganu. When you see a scenery, what you see, some sky, vegetation, habitants, water body, these are called granules. And the form we make it is called granulation. It is in one of the natural way, as we see that our <coughs> that uh, Darwinian surveillance, uh, self-evolution, self-organization. Similarly, granulation is also one of the biologically inspired phenomena. And the process we found granule. Then I will explain how rough set became important for this granular computing. And granular computing means basically you play with the granule, not with the individual data. That means it's twofold task. You extract the granule and you perform following operation on the granule or using the granules. Obviously, formation of granule is a very crucial part, and that evolves in the process of doing experiment. The subject is about 10 years old, but the concept granule was embedded in rough set theory. Granule was embedded in fuzzy set theory of 65, but granular computing was not there. I picked up rough set theory when I was working at NASA Johnson Space Center. That time, East European people, I know not how many of you know, NASA not only does research on space, but they also fund for research to industries, university students, college students for doing PhD, master, internship. So, East European guys who are very strong in math, they used to come for internship. So, they had to give talk. So, I used to attend those lectures. So, that's how I picked up the subject of upset. But uh, I had two things in mind. Just, uh, I will explain later on, that you can do something uh, with the granule concept and you can make uncertainty modeling. That I will explain. So that's why rough set came into picture. I will explain. Then I will explain generalized rough set and entropy. That means how fuzzy sets can be incorporated in order to deal with real life problems. It is called generalized rough set. That means a much stronger paradigm for handling uncertainty. Stronger in the sense what this fuzzy and neural, fuzzy and rough cannot do. But if you bring a probabilistic uncertainty, that will be even much more you know, stronger. But I didn't do it here. Just we are considering this. Thing. Then I will show there are many applications. Because wherever you have data, you have uncertainty. 
it is always inherits. You cannot, whether it's small data, medium or big data, uncertainty you cannot avoid. So therefore, I'll show this example of significance of lower and upper approximation or offset for tracking problem. And in the process, I will explain granular flow graph, graph filter, then granulated deep learning. Now, no talk is incomplete unless you mention about the depth and about the deep learning. <coughs> and at last, some slide for challenging issues, as I mentioned in my inaugural speech. So what is granulation? It's basically natural cluster. Whatever you see, the replacing fine-grained universe by a coarse-grained one, more in like with human perception. That's what I told you. This is fine-grained, but I'm seeing in a in terms of coarse way. Set of young girls, young boys, middle-aged men. That's all the one. Of course, that is an overlapping, overlapping one. So, this is a process like self-organization, self-production morphogenesis, Darwinian evolution that are abstracted from natural phenomena. So this is another concept. And in the process that we generate segments or clusters, that means the set of young boys, young girls, old men, this is called granules. So very simple concept. So granules are product of Granulation. Granulation means natural clustering. It's a very layman's sense. Eh? Okay. So it's a granulation is a process of formation and representation of granules. This is the challenging area. How to form granules that you characterize the problem and how you represent the granules. This is the most challenging area. See, nothing is free. When you Solve some problem, you, you just generate another, another set of problem. Now let's say concept of granule, for example. So mathematically, it's a clump of a group of indiscernible entities or indistinguishable entities, objects, with respect to given attribute. Indistinguishable with respect to similarity, proximity, functionality, etc. Two points are similar as a distance. Two genome strings are similar in terms of functionality. So with respect to some kind of similarity, when you see that elements cannot be discriminated, you form a granule. Just like young boys from 20 to 30, you cannot discriminate sometimes. So let us call it a granule. It is easier. Otherwise, if you want to discriminate, then it will be very much expensive also. Unless you, you need it. So example of granules, say in age, very young, young, not so tall, so many times. In case of direction, when you drive a car, slightly left, slightly right, so these are all granules. That you are not going with a specific degree. In a school, each section can be called as a granule, because section is determined either by age group, or by marks obtained in the previous class, or by sex. So I call all, it's a granule. In an image, that an image, Six consecutive gray labels, naked eye cannot discriminate. As per Weber's law, one to six, two to seven, that is the basic concept of image. So I can consider them as granule. Since naked eye cannot discriminate, one to six, two to seven, three to eight, yeah, okay. So now look at this if granule. Granules may be crisp, could be fuzzy. In the previous case, granules are fuzzy because very young, young, they do not have precise boundary. Direction, that is also fuzzy. In the case of school, they are crisp, because every section has no overlapping with, with others. In case of image, that is a crisp. So in real life problem, canoes could be crisp, canoes could be fuzzy. Now, before going further, I'm just one, another is called concept of cut planning. Canoes could be another is called F information of granules. What is F information canoe? That means, suppose you have an object, or region, or concept, or class, whatever you think. And suppose this is a disk in low, medium, high. Just it's a toy example I'm showing. So now I can say that this concept or region that can be approximated with the help of this rectangle. 
And rectangle means first feature is medium, second feature is medium. So this is the rule. And I call this rule as information graph. That means Ganon need not be only in the physical domain. It can be in the relational domain also. That means with this help, I can approximately encode this region or concept or something. Just I'm giving an example. So if you have elongated object, then you have multiple granules. It has got too many applications for neural network design, anything. I'm not going to details. I'm just, before I go further, I thought I also pick Otherwise, you will have a concept of some granules space only just clustering. That is a question you will ask. That's why it's not only clustering. <coughs> Clustering is an easy way to visualize, but this kind of also this is called informational granules. That means you extract some kind of relation out of the data which characterize the classes. That means instead of segregating this feature, I, I approximately code it with the terms of relation. So this is my granule. I play further operation based on this granule. And obviously I will see when my data is, is features are uncorrelated, this relation in all the features will not appear in the relation. That means all the features will not appear in relation means there is an inherent dimensionality reduction. So, so that paper we have published a long back with uh, Pavitra Mitra, the professor of IIT Kharagpur. This highly, highly, highly cited paper. I am not going to detail. So, so in the form of granulation, you extract many more information also. Let me go to my one. So granular computing is a basically two-fold task. Works with the process of information granulation or abstraction of information, and where computation is performed with information granules, not the data points. And since you are not data point, that means you are playing with the compressed information. And since you are playing with the compressed information, our intuition says there must be a computation of gain. So that was our basic promise when we started working about 10 days. 10 years back, yeah, that means I can use it for large data sets. Because in many of the cases, we do not need precise result. We need approximated re results. If you need precise result, you start from that uh, approximation, then you go. For example, if you start a neural network, don't start from the 0, 0, 0, obvious. You start from the better position. If you need perfect, then you put little more money, you get the result. Now, given this granulated domain, I have a granulated domain. So let's consider that a school. Every school has a section, set of sections, and all sections may not have equal number of uh, students also. So granules are of unequal size. Okay. Now, given this granulated domain, define a concept or set, clip set. Given a granulated domain, um, sorry, let me go further. And Suppose an image, you have been working with image. When you discretize X image, Y image, you form granulation. If there is no discretization, there is no granulation, there is no uncertainty. You are losing information because of the granulation. You are X axis, Y axis, Z axis, you are encoding, right? 0, 1, 2, 2, 31, 31 line. So now I, if I ask you a question, what is the object? You cannot define because these are all defined in terms of granule and each granules of similar intensity sorry pixels of similar intensity similar color we call it granule in the finest level each pixel is considered as a granule so when i say what is the object i cannot define exactly object because that object boundary may go through one of those granules also not en not encoding the entire granule partly the granule so that is a good example of image. When you say gray tone image, why fuzzy set? Because boundaries are not crisp. And then why rough set? Because you, are, you have discretized it. So once you make discretization, you are incorporating granulation. Now given this granulated domain, you define a set. And I approximate the set in terms of granules from inside the set and outside the set, or from lower side or upper side. I call it lower and upper. This is what is called rough set, which is explained in 
1982 by Professor Pawlak from Poland. For example, so, so rough set means it's an approximation of a crisp set defined over a granulated domain in terms of granules from low side and upper side. For example, this is an information. This is a school on sections, granular sections. This is a set. Suppose a contaminated disease had been spread over the school. Set. Now the next question I am asking you, what are the granules that will definitely belong to this set? You can see that there is no uniquely, uh, sorry, there is a set of granules yellow which definitely belong to this set. There is also granules yellow that includes the yellow, this the orange that includes the yellow. That means these yellow granules they definitely belong. Orange granules definitely as well as possibly belong. So if you subtract yellow minus orange, you get the possible granules. This is called lower approximation, called upper approximation. That means a crisp set defined over a granule, you have approximated from inside, outside, from inner side, from upper side, lower side or upper side. You call lower and upper approximation. So rough set is nothing but a crisp set with rough description. It's unlike fuzzy set, a set you can example, uh, long street, large number, beautiful lady, uh, so and so, blonde hair, but here you cannot say, because set is crisp. <coughs> now the school, go back to the school example. So some contaminated disease has been spread, principal has to make a decision, infected classes should be declared holiday. So how do you define infected classes? Because those classes where all the students were infected, they are lower approximation. That means they are definitely infected. So you declare them. But there are other sections also where not all the students, but at least one student was infected. For them, this year has to be taken by the principal. It's called uncertainty. So every concept or region, whatever defined over a granulated domain, they incur some kind of uncertainty whenever you are going in the defining one. So any rough set means it is a crisp set defined over granule. Now if I add one more dimension, then granule size will be reduced and the uncertainty will be also reduced. So uncertainty is coming because of the granularity. So you can define roughness of this set equal to simple way, 1 minus cardinality of lower divided by cardinality of upper. Obviously when cardinality of lower equal to upper means <coughs> orange granules will be equal to the yellow granules, so it will be zero. That means it is possible only when there is no granularity. This is a very simple concept. Professor uh, Pavlak when he explained, he did not go by the granular combination, he just explained that this is the gran granule. So we can define accordingly, this rough set is nothing but a crisp set but with rough description and this vague definition of X in the universe in terms of lower and upper approximation, they basically signify the incomplete knowledge about the universe. Incomplete knowledge with respect to the definability of X, with respect to, to the granule definition. If you have added another more dimension, the granule size will be reduced, then uncertainty will be also, also reduced. So, so when we make a decision, we used to make it uh, knowledge discovery or AI made decision, we want to minimize the incompleteness. So based on this simple equation, we will define entropy in, in the, the way we just, uh, would, would just like to do to, to deal with our application domain and we will minimize this. So this is the two concepts as I mentioned to you that, that clicked my mind back in 1990s. Uncertainty handling using lower and upper approximation and granular computing using granules. Now I will explain what is uncertainty handling for machine learning point of view. In machine learning basically you are doing with also a cluster concept unsupervised. So suppose this is a granulated domain. This is my cluster. Now every cluster we can uh, intuitively say that the points uh, close to the center, regarding them we do not have any ambiguity for their belonging. 
right? Only difficulty comes with, in the boundary side. So I can define our concept-wise some thing region like this, some region. So I can call it in the notion of rough set theory. This is my lower approximation, this is my upper approximation. Right? So any problem I can define this set depending on, on my problem. So I can define this one. Now this is, here it is, set is crisp, Ganul is crisp. Of the Pavlov's definition goes by that. Set is crisp and Ganul is crisp. But in real life problem, both of them could be fuzzy or one of them could be fuzzy. For example, in an image, gray image, where is the boundary? We don't know, this is fuzzy. The set is fuzzy. Similarly, when you move with a three by three window, five by five window, they could be discrete, they could be overlapping also. So if I consider three by three as a window, as a granule, so granules could be overlapping. So more you spend money, more you are ability, able to handle uncertainty. So depending on your money, how much you take. That means in real life problem, both of them or either could be fuzzy. Now, if it's a fuzzy set, means fuzzy set is nothing but membership functions. So then I cannot count the number of, uh, the, the, I cannot count the cardinality. I, I cannot count the number because these are all fuzzy set membership. So then I take the cardinality of the, of the, of the, of the fuzzy set. That I add the membership values. So lower value, so generalized, I will define generalized rough set. That means set crisp, granule fuzzy, set fuzzy, Ganul crisp, and both are fuzzy. So this is, uh, I'm not going to explain here the one. So that's how you can have generalized upset. But I'm not considering uncertainty arising from probability occurrence of an event. Probability answer. If you can bring it together, then it will be one. I, I can give it to a, your as a homework also. You can, can try that one. So your uncertainty is due to incomplete region, uncertainty due to granularity, two things. Uncertainty means overlapping concept classes. Uncertainty due to granularity. That's what's called generalized rough entropy. We have defined based on logarithm. This is the entropy picture. Logarithm gain function, exponential gain function. Logarithm gain function means when your probability occurs of an element is pi, amount of ignorance is one minus pi, one one divided by pi. But we argued in the Nikhil Paul paper, our first thesis, that it could be 1 minus pi also. So accordingly, we can have logarithmic entropy, exponential entropy. And if you take, it's a roughness of A, that means it's an object background, or set X and its complement set. So if I take its cross-section where A, roughness of A equal to B, we get this. So here, it quantifies the incompleteness of knowledge about the universe with respect to the definability of the set X. So it's a, it measures the gain of incompleteness. Main measure the gain of incompleteness. Therefore, I can use it for any kind of task, including object tracking. Now I'm giving an example for object tracking, but you can use it for any kind of biometrics. We have got so many applications. The major concept is how to reduce the uncertainty. Now, object tracking is a layman way. What you do? You segment the object. From video means it's a sequence of images. So if you know image processing, you can do video processing. Only difference is that you have got a temporal domain extra. In an image, you get intensity value only. It's a black and white. It's a RGB, RGB component. Nothing you get. But from that, we generate local feature. Average, first order statistics, second order statistics, all those things. But if you take a video, you get additional information, temporal domain. That means you take the difference domain. Because when the, uh, take the video of moving objects, if you subtract, still portion, they get subtracted. Only the moving portions, they come. That's the all, only difference. Therefore, three ways we can think of. You minimize the every image frame <coughs> with respect to minimizing uncertainty. You extract object and you put a boundary and tell it. Or if you want to improve, you more make the special uh, segmentation, also you make the temporal segmentation. Then you integrate, you segment. This is one way, unsupervised. <coughs> so minimize entropy, 
minimizing uncertainty in computational knowledge, maximizing object background separation, application to object extraction, tracking moving objects. This is the simplest way. We have, we have published many papers on this one. Now, next level is come is 1983. If you go by this, how to segment an image, you imagine we have um, image processing uh, when I was working at Imperial College, we started working from that. And thereafter, there are plenty work that with respect to every threshold, you see whether entropy is minimizing or not, or, or some other kind of uncertainty measure. Now I'm saying no two more based on classification and estimation. But these are unsupervised tracking. Here I will explain the role of lower and upper. In the previous case, there is no concept of lower and upper approximation. And in the process, I will explain arbitrary granules because here in the scene, granules are arbitrary. That means different shapes, arbitrary shapes. You cannot fix granules flow graph, granular deep planning. First example I will show granules from arbitrary shapes. So use neighborhood granules. That means you take a pixel, you form a neighboring distance with a threshold. You connect, you connect a growth. That means a region growing. It's a typical example of clustering, region growing with respect to some threshold. Okay? And you do it in RGBD, depth focus. It's a kind of data, let's consider. So we form 3D spatial temporal granules. That means you are taking temporal information. 2D spatial, one dimensional threshold by region growing. Then the beauty is that we are considering. Usually, literature says you make background modeling and then you track object. Because you first make the background modeling, then you subtract from them the background, you get the object. But we say no. You made the object modeling. And what is my object? I, obj I extract lower approximation. Because lower approximation means definitely belonging. So I, if I can get the lower approximation, I can model it and then I can allow it to, to grow. So I extract lower approximation, and everything I am doing in granular model, not in the pixel level. So I follow granular level rule-based generation based on experience, automatic updation of rule-based, and deal with tracking unsupervised overlapping object, newly appeared object, that you are tracking one object, suddenly another object comes. Then multi-object in different direction and speed. The lady is doing exercise at T t minus 1. So you take the subtraction, you get this. That means this is the region which are moving. Others are 0. t minus 2, t minus 3. So if you got t4, 3, 5, you get more information, but it's expensive. So let's consider 3. Now take union and intersection. <coughs> intersection means I get this. That means I can see that this is the minimum which will be always existing in the all three years previous frames, including the current frame. So I call it lower approximation. And I, this is the upper approximation, that much I can allow if I require it. So this is text, here, 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 this I am collecting in depth space. And then I make it a granulation. So this is depth frame information. I get this special color granules based on the region growing. Suppose this is a canon, I see that, and then I go to the depth space because I because my locations are fixed, keeping the location from depth tau domain, I go that then I form the another grand. So I'm reducing for two dimensional, I'm taking the third dimension. So I get the different granules of different sizes. So I forget everything, only I keep this information in the form of set. This is in tau domain, now I go to the F domain, I go to the RGB domain. So I've got RGB, I've got depth, and I've got temporal. Three features in terms of set theoretic forms. These are all, all set theoretic forms. And we have this 11 rule base based on experience. This is an ideal case of background, ideal case of object. What is those? These granules, these are all set theoretic form, not belonging, partially belonging, complete belonging, because set complete belonging, partial belonging, exact belonging. 
So when all these are not belonging, not belonging, it's a background, all belonging, all object. Now you see that 8 and 9, same feature but different decision. So these are called ambiguous decisions. So our objective will be to how to make sure that unambiguous regions fired more than the ambiguous region. If the ambiguous region more, so I quantify a decision like called coverage factor. So coverage factor, if increases, I say good. If a coverage factor reduces, I say no bad. Then I make a decision change. That is, I say, I check with the help of granular flow graph that which parameter is responsible. So it's called intelligent way of updating. That means I do not change all the parameters. I do not do it for all features. I only take the selected parameter or selected feature for which it needs to be changed so that my coverage factor increases. So this is called intelligent updating and it's called blow flow graph means it's a decision map between input to output. And since I use the, the concept of granular, we call it granular rule base, granular flow graph. This lady was doing exercise by right hand. There is no upgradation. Now suddenly, what's happened? Ah, now it's working. So you see, the lady was doing exercise with right hand. But suddenly left hand moves in, but is not able to track it. So it fails. But if we go for the updation, that means if you track something, suddenly another one comes, this upgradation takes care of this, this one. So this is un, uh, unsupervised. Now if you take this multiple objects moving in different directions, different speed, so, some problem here. The reflection on the one, the shadow is not trapped because we are using it depth information. That's why shadow is not a one because depth feature doesn't change with with, with shadow. See, so where you frames per second 15 and the previous and the previous frame five, current frame one six. Now come to complete occlusion, complete overlapping. Here we have used the concept of same tau space. We define a neighborhood graph set filter. What we do, suppose T or a Gerger feature, T to T minus 1, T to T minus 2, T minus 3. Then I take a union. So I get one matrix. Now T minus 1, T minus 2 to T minus 2, T minus 2, T minus 3. I get three matrix. So I make one to three point convolution. I borrowed this word from electric engineering. And with, then I get two three by three matrix. One is called lower approximation and upper approximation. How do I go? I use the conversion operator union and intersection. And now based on this, suppose I have got the union of changed information current to all previous frames, UDP. Then change information between conjugative. So I get here P matrix, here I get one matrix. I take input output relation convolution, 1 to p point convolution. And I use convolution operator, intersection and union. When I take intersection, I get lower approximation. When I get union operation, I do not get our upper. But I only those which have non-empty intersection with the union, non-empty intersection with the lower approximation, they constitute the upper. As per the definition of lower and upper lower and upper have got non-empty intersection. So that's how I get two sets of matrices, P matrices. For example, this is the delta P, that is one, lower approximation and upper approximation. That is, I get for every frame, three frames, three one. Out of there, I compute the speed, displacement, acceleration, and I predict for next F T plus one, some distance, some point, in terms of lower and upper. In terms of lower and upper. And then I compute the lower approximate, that uh, roughness, one minus cardinality of lower divided by cardinal upper. If the cardinal lower uh, roughness is less, 
I track it. If the roughness is low, I say no, because it is occluded. So in case that case, I take the object out upon minus lower regions and I compute intuitionistic entropy, which measures the amount of occlusion. And I see that with oh, those overlapping point, that means upper minus lower, I put it in the object and background and see where roughness is reducing more. Accordingly, I put it. And this is the performance measure signal to noise ratio, cardinality of lower to upper minus lower. So this I can call it amplitude, this I can call it a signal, noise, amplitude and background. So signal and our desire would be always higher signal to noise ratio. So if you have got low signal to noise ratio means it is poor performance. In that case we have to improve this by changing the threshold in that threshold for one. And if by changing threshold they do not increase much, then you increase the number of previous frames. If it is three, to go to five. If it is five, go to seven. You take always odd because you have to compute some sort of median also to filter it. So this is the typical our London Underground Metro. See the prediction, PBS 1 by classification, this is by prediction. PBS 1 by rule-based classification, this is completed by prediction, defined speed. We have used frames per second, 15 frames per second, P equal to 6, that is 1 plus 5 PBS frames. See the complete occlusion, so the tracker is able to, to track it. So basically these are machine learning tools. I am giving in short this granular based machine learning tools which takes care of uncertainty or tracking problem in uh, different difficult situation including complete uh, occlusion. So it has uh, obviously uh, recent paper also in real time event peak cognition and its application to IoT because in smart cities you always need, when you track something, it can develop a corresponding IoT also, that wherever there is a sudden change or something, it will be, will be, will be detected. <coughs> Bioinformatics, social link prediction, air quality interpretation, that means how to find the effect of those uh, particular matter 2.5 and 10 on air one. Now, where are they basically going to? When you do research, you have to keep in mind at least five to seven years ahead. Where are they going to be useful? You can see at least there are, um, it's called computational theory of perception, natural computing, and big data analytics. Computational theory of perception means you perform the computation based on perception, not by measurement. For example, when you drive a car, you use perception of distance, space, likelihood, perception of direction, you do not measure better, so it's called perception. Now, perception is attributes are granular, slightly left, slightly right. And because of the limited uh, resolution capability of human brain and other organs, perceptions are imprecise. Therefore, perception is characterized by fuzzy granularity. Second, natural computing. So granular computing, as I mentioned, it's a uh, another process like self-organization, self-evolution, Darwinian evolution that are abstracted from natural phenomena. And granular, if granulation is inherent in our human cognition and, and just thinking process. Therefore, it is essential for human co cognition. And big data handling, uncertainty handling is an obvious tool. And granular data mining. Now, when you talk about big data handling, the question is uncertainty handling, granular mining, granular deep learning, because when you make large data, it is a time consuming. Even when you do the machine learning, when the sample number, number of samples increases, the performance is better. But at the same time, it is time consuming and difficult to engineer. 
So that's why it's called granulated deep learning, new concept. So it uses computation time into performance. So what is deep learning in a simple uh, naive manner? It's so learning in depth in different stages. You give more importance to characterize the learning, the data representation, rather than task specific application. That means you learn the data more. Abundant data makes deep learning a meaningful choice, but deep learning is time consuming and difficult to engineer. So here comes to granular deep learning. Now what is granular deep learning? How many of you know the convolution neural network? Deep CNN? You know. So basic, it's, called, it's very popular for image and video processing. There are many other ones, STM model for spatiotemporal network, uh, spatiotemporal data. So what is the beauty here? It has a convolution layer, max pool, reactable linear unit, fully connected, and then output. It's a classifier. It's a deep architecture suitable for learning with image. And object recognition in deep learning basically labeling the different objects in an image frame with their high pro probability class and predicting their bounding boxes. This is a task. That means you first predict they are with high probable class. Then you predict a boundary. Now, it is the convolution layer which is responsible to generate all kinds of features from the image frame to different filters. This is the beauty here. That means before going to the classifier, this is the classifier. Classifier has, has just not much role here. Yeah. Main role comes from here. You extract all kinds of features that, that are responsible for characterize the objects with their maximum probable well, classes. And obviously, deep learning based object detector, if you have AlexNet, ResNet, there are many, they utilize multiple CNNs, multiple convolution layers as their backbone to extract features in depth from different images. Of course, if you increase number of CNN more, you get more extracted features, likely, but at the cost of computation time. So I will use an, one AlexNet, which has got five convolution there, which is very popular AlexNet. So, so how does it work in, in granulation? If it's a convolution layer, you know what, what do you do? Everyone, you put a three by three mass filter. <coughs> you just scan it, multiply, you get a point, you reduce from nine dimension dimension to three dimension three dimension, reduced. So this is how we have got an image sliding a three by three convolution layer. Okay? So you get nine WW and they multiply divided by one, I reduce it to three by three matrix. And the convolved value is this. So image size has reduced from 9 by 9 to 3 by 3. It's OK. That means every time I slide, I multiply and this. It is time consuming. Now, if I make a granulation in the image, if I have granulated pocket, object background, say, for example. I make a three granulation. So now when I slide, I only slide because these are all similar gray values. So I only slide once and I repeat the other two. So Y1, it become all Y1, Y1, Y1. Previously it was Y1, Y2, Y4, now it become Y1. So I slide only once instead of one. So if there are three granules, I only slide three times instead of nine by nine. Okay? So I scan only three times, or not nine times. So there is a significant speed up, but compromising some accuracy. So it depends what you want to know. This is the concept we first published in neural computing with our, one of our MTech students on. Now let's consider LST, two stage. Two stage object detector. Two stage means first you object localize, then you track. Classification. Obviously it is little expensive, but it is better accuracy. Instead of single stage, you go for directly classification. But here, you first localize the object. And we call it region proposal network. There are RCNN, first RCNN, first RCNN, they are all very popular network. 
Now I consider this one, I will consider granulated RCNA. So, special, here we are considering special temporal granulation. They didn't consider. I take the special, since I am having the video, why don't I explode this? And which improves performance, that one of my our PhD students from IIT Kharagpur, this is submitted. I am now, now explaining that one. So, it improved real time detection speed and accuracy. So, I am taking <coughs> granulation, I am taking video at a time, I am taking special color temporal cameras. So, this is my track. It's a Alex net, five convolutional layer, three pooling layer, and three FC layer. This is my video, it takes directly video as input. It is taking the pulling one, convolution granule one, special color granule. We are taking the special temporal granule. Then we are taking the interaction. Sorry, this is temporal granule. This is special color granule. For the intersection, we get special temporal granule. That means I, I am reducing the size, only keeping the salient one, which are definitely belonging. Then after coming here, again I am taking, extracting another intersection, granule and pulling file. Now, after that, I am generating the anchor because if I, in case I miss something, so I different generate kinds of anchor. That means I have first drastically reduced, obviously said this have to be there. In case I have missed something, I put some anchor, so I, those anchors around those points are my input. That's all. So what I am gaining? Video directly as input, like unlike other thing one, that is I do not consider static image. Special temporal granules extracting region of interest better than fast and fast as one. Only granules formed over the pool five we are considering, not the entire map. Only the positive otherwise. Oh, it is mine. Wait a minute. Spam. So only the positive otherwise, that means the object backgrounds I am considering for this. FCI, not the entire one, and only this FT region corresponding to this from the one I am considering as input, and therefore it improves real-time detection and accuracy. So here you see, you are making object localization first, then out of those features only using for classification, unlike our conventional shallow learning. There we take the entire object as a feature. Now, where it could be used? Just like a steel plant data, we have this. I will not mention that you know, this uh, um, secret. So, suppose a real-time traffic scenario. Traffic scenario monitoring, this is a very challenging issue. But traffic scenario, what is the problem? Because the uh, cameras are quite away from the cars. And sometimes uh, occlusion, weather condition, so therefore, traffic scenario contains very small size objects, person, vehicle, which are often fully noisy, clear, occluded, low resolution, cluster analysis. So it is difficult to identify each object and then track. And if the object detection is not good, tracking will not be good. Therefore, I cannot go by conventional machine learning tool or conventional vision technique. Yeah. But at the other hand, I have what is my advantage? I have got the abundant data of that particular road for last six months or one year data. <coughs> so here comes the significance of deep learning. Because I cannot do individually, because of the object is cluttered, object is obscure, because of the camera is quite away. So inaccurate detection affects one. Here comes the significance of deep learning since we have now abundant of data. So here is an example of steel plant, one of the steel plant. There are called eight objects. It objects say car, bike, loco, minivan, bus, truck, bicycle, parcel. And they are in three colors. I put it green means car, pink means bike, and blue means parcel. This is first faster RCNN. And I'll show some red marks that means that they are not able to detect it. It's a problem here. Huh. 
see the thing, the red marks, that means they are not able to be detected. Again, I am just showing this. This is first hour RCNL, 6 frames per second. Tracking speed is 29 frames, but I have reduced to 10 for visibility. Now you see, if I take the special color granules, not special temporal, you see the red things, they are not being able to be, to be detected by special temporal, special color only, if I take the granules. Now if you go by the special temporal, That's one thing, go on. Now, based on that, you can make this uh, anomaly detection also. Say, for example, collision and uh, near miss. And, 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 and in order to abstract the information in terms of description, you can use Z numbers also. Because Z number is defined by Professor Lapti in 2011 uh, that uh, quantifies the abstraction of information of as a context or a sentence as a so quantification abstraction of the quantification of information it's a nice way to say abstraction of quantification of of information from a natural language or from a scene so whenever you have collision and near miss you can describe the scenario in terms of g in terms of probability that means g number determines the reliability of the detected anomaly class and provide linguistic description that means the reliability. Now it comes to the evolution of the, of the discipline, as I mentioned to you. It's a pattern mission, it started in 1960s. If you look at the literature, it, uh, before 60, you do not get anything. 60. We started in 70s in ISI, in, in TIFR also, in a science. I joined 75. Then image processing came in around one decade later because it needs a powerful image processing facility a little bit. So that's why I went to Imperial College without, without going for a postdoc at Purdue. Yeah, I would like to do some image processing work. I didn't realize that after 40 years, 45 years, it will be now so much important for data science, data science. Yeah. But image processing, it came in history. In 80s, if you look at that, AI, ML, expert because there are certain limitations of pattern recognition. So in order to make a decision, that means to make human-like decision, we are always trying to emulate the human type of reasoning, logical thinking, and making decisions. So we want to give a most probable solution. AI wants to give a most probable solution based on the evolution of our human mind. And then it came a knowledge-based system in 1990s. India had five knowledge-based centers, one in ISI, one in TFR, one in IIT Kanpur, one is your IIT Madras, one in CDAC, five, for, for five years. Then in data mining, we had 2000 because of WWW and Genome Project. Data has changed everything. When you go to a medical doctor, you tell your problems or your hospital. You go to hospital only when you are sick. And when you go to hospital, they write your family name, age, etc., pathological measurements, some other. So something are numerical, something are text, something are tic tac, something color. When you go to a medical doctor, doctor writes spelling mistake is always doctor's prescription. They draw something numerical, so it is heterogeneous. And 
the hospital system whenever they put in the uh, web, they are not putting the web as because some machine learning guy will work on that. But machine learning guy, they have got nothing to do. That's why they take this data and then see how can you discriminate whether it is a cancer or normal patients out of those data. But out of data, most of that are uh, uncorrelated and they are heterogeneous. They are categorical data. They are tic-tac data. So your whatever you developed in pattern notion before eighties, they are no longer useful. That's why you are getting the same topic in different names published, published, published because of this data. And there we have large number of samples, small number of features. But now it is other way. When you have a gene uh, selection problem for cancer, you have a few thousand genes. For number of patients, only few hundreds. And within the hundred also, normal patients are less, cancerous patients are more. So data does not obey the philosophy or the option that we assumed in the 70s. And that time we had assumed that whenever data features are correlated, we go by the principal component analysis standard. But now they are uncorrelated. So that time we selected best features subject to clustering in the sample space so that separation between features should be like this. Sorry, we select those features so that the separation between classes are maximum. And we consider that is the best feature. Today, we cluster in the feature space so that my object, yeah, cancerous samples and non sample samples get maximized. So that topics has already changed. It's just topsy-turvy. So up to, out of few thousands, if you can make few hundreds of clusters, then you take the centroids, so you have reduced from topsy to one. Yeah, so that's why our uh, Professor Murthy's uh, Prabhita Mitra thesis, that is highly cited paper in PAMI, new approaches for different pattern recognition. So concept has already been changed. So new terms and technologies come every time. Data mining, big data, now we've got data driven science, and we have big hope. We have big terms always. When we have expert system, we call rule-based system. When we have knowledge-based system, we call knowledge-based, rule adaptation, rule mining, all those, those new terms. Then we have got case-based reasoning. All new terms are coming in order to incorporate the challenge. Because classical tools have certain limitation because they are based on certain honest, holy assumptions. And similarly, deep learning has come. Now you should have a little bit caution. Don't jump into the deep learning as we go if you don't change. If you have to know deep learning, you have to know shallow learning. If you have to know shallow learning, you have to know neural network learning. If you have to know neural learning, you have to know pattern recognition. And you have to know image processing because now data has image. Most of data has image. So you have to understand what is the difference between a speech data and what is the difference of the image data. Every data has character. That's why image processing has got its own discipline as by its own right. Though we consider initial image as a data, just like a pattern, just like speech. Speech processing before recognition itself, it needs many kinds of processing. That's why speech processing itself gives a separate uh, ITP transaction. Similarly, image also. Before going for recognition of the image, there are many tasks which in, in involves you need to take care. That's why the image processing becomes a topic of its own one. Ultimate objective is to recognize the content, okay? So you need to understand the basic thing, otherwise it could be a top. So this is our latest book that we published during pandemic, Devaroti, which is an MTech from this NIT. So I students and younger colleagues of collaborator, I because my, most of the work are from with our young colleagues and students from India and abroad, and now I'm holding National Science Chair, so I acknowledge them. With this, thank you very much. Thanks. So, if you have any question, well, one. Yeah, just one hour I took. Uh, took. Uh.
Huh? You said in one of the words that you, uh, word of caution. Uh -huh. Also, you told that uh, being a researcher, it to stay seven to ten years ahead. So, what is the way forward? The way forward means now. Next five to seven years, it will be in a buzzword. That can that much I can see. Even in England, I saw the same thing, and India, Chinese, they all follow. This is basically American buzzword. Americans beat those subjects, and we all run for postdoc, postdoc, postdoc. That is our problem now. If you look at the data mining, etc., Americans in 2010 they realized that there will be a 45 to 50 percent shortage of deep analytics because of layoff, lockout, etc. And uh, data is for big data is four B characterizes. So we all went for big data. We could not solve many problems. Now we are talking about deep learning, deep learning. So it will go. We will publish many papers also. Uh, just like our pandemic gave us opportunity to publish many papers with the pandemic data, any projects. But now you write pandemic paper, they will not accept. It. They will not say, well, pandemic has gone. Uh, now it's not that important to publish it immediately. So that time when you publish pandemic, you, you may just forget also. They got the promotion, everything is fine. So that is a nature gifted promotion, nature gifted publication. Yes, it's my experience because I also worked with the pandemic with, the, uh, with this uh, uh, transfer learning. So one reviewer says, is it necessary to publish this data so early? Otherwise we can make it, get it more re review. So that's how one. So it will go for five to seven years, it will go. After that, you realize that there is some limitation. See, patternization application that started 40, 50 years before. When you have the fuzzy logic based uh, vacuum cleaner, vacuum D1, dart cleaner, refrigerator, these are all AI based techniques. Uh, your uh, underground sundial. Uh, uh, you take multiple sensors and you want. I was in Cambridge, I was putting in some uh, washing machine. Say, if you have less number of pressure uh, loads, it will consume less by one. So we have sensor. So this is intelligent machine. The intelligent machine, not because of AI today. AI was long back, 50 years back. That's why I'm telling, telling that uh, Professor uh, Alan Pudding, who has passed away at the age of 42, that's a basic concept in London Mathematical Society, that what we need is a machine that can learn from environment. So that's envision machine learning, that envision intelligent machine. So any machine which has capability of reasoning, learning, searching, optimization, that's all any design engineer would love to have in his or her system. No? When you start a neural network uh, with Asis Ghosh, uh, Sushmita, Jayanto, that time we had a big thought that <laughs> neural network emulates the uh, information representation scheme in human brain. So you will be emulating. Then after two to three years, no, it's not so easy. It's a question of biology, psychology, physics. So then you say, okay, it's a tool. It has some characteristics like adaptivity, robustness, ruggedness, massive parallelism, optimality. That's all. So any uh, design engineer would love to have all those characteristics in his or her model. So why don't we use them? So that's how I think it will also, also come. Uh, so, Oh, already you are saying that it is not replacing, not going to human, human intelligence, but it will be assisting human intelligence. That much we can say that that was already be, we have been doing for last 40 years. Now we are giving, giving more focus, focus towards this. When you have crime detection, at least if you can form few thousands to few tens, that is also better. Now few tens, human can interfere with us. So that's my objective. It will go for five to seven years, publication. But again, it will be another 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 new name will come. If I if I, if I survive, then I will see that another another new name has come. But anyway, these are good tools also. I don't do that this way. Deep learning that is a model is a tool. <coughs> but this example that I showed of traffic, it's, it's it's giving good results because you. Uh, conventional machine learning cannot do this. Cannot, 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 cannot do this. Identifying is individually and the tracking. Your, your objective is to track whether that gentleman is uh, by, uh, um, violating any rule or not. You are not identifying the owner. So in that case, it's good. You are giving some good result.
Congress Party. So, so let's consider it's a good tool, partly. But whether you will be using for everybody or not, that I'm not sure. Because it's an ethical issue also. In our country, if you make people out of, out of job, that's not good. Rather, we should use this one so that we can use, make use of artificial intelligence to just train our just people. It should be, should be, should be other way. You make artificial intelligence to create more jobs and to, to train more people accordingly to RC, instead of making layoff or lockout for just country like ours. So it is an unethical issue also. The ethical issue is there. That's why many states, they are a little bit hesitating. Hesitating. Now we have got too many manpower. No? We, need, uh, we need men to help them. Uh, help them to just help yourself. We do not need any grade three, grade four workers, but still we are having. What can you do? Yes, please. So one important aspect would be how to decide the size of the value. Better the value, we will have less difference between the upper and lower boundary. Hi. Hi. See, see, value is kind of uh, approximation. If you read that for something that is different, when you move in the situation, you cannot discriminate individual elements of points by some reason. Then it is something convenient to consider. Okay, so it's a kind of approximation. Now, in, in case of tracking, you are not interested to know whether X guy or Y guy is going. You are wanted to know this particular stranger, so it is very helpful here. Yeah. If you want to know the, exactly who is that man, a Shambhit or Narayan, so then it will need a little more precision, face recognition after that. But before that, in most of the cases, you do not need that. So you define your problem first. Then you go by this. Because when you are going for approximation, you are losing information. But you, you are gaining in terms of competition tremendously. But here, in case we have seen that during training also, it has improved the accuracy. accuracy. So in, in, the, in that paper that you have cited. And if you reduce the granulation, then you are going to more precision. My, my example is for granular level processing. I did not make granular level decision. If you go by the Gishian level, then you can go by the hierarchy. Uh, state wise, then the uh, district wise, then village wise, and go on. Uh. So the paper that you were citing, 2022's paper, uh, where you were having granular, spatial granular and temporal granular. After that, you are interested. Alexnet. Alexnet. After that, you are interested. GRCNN. So, is it not something similar to like uh, another way of drawing attention? <coughs> to? At, uh, there are some mechanism of having attention models. Uh, could be. Yeah. Could be. Uh, see, the, the basic philosophy always is same. Yeah. Same. Uh, basic philosophy is always the same. What I am here doing here, uh, when I look at the first RCN and first RCN, they are very popular one. They are considering, first RCN, what are they doing? They are also selecting something. First one, they are not selecting. But, they are, but, but it is a hard computing. They are searching all kinds of models. First cost of computing, faster, they reduce. That's why they got faster. But we have further fastened it by incorporating special temporal granules and further reducing the granular size. That means the localization. Localization, more specific and more result. Localization and more feature. And then, if I, in case I have missed something, that's why I'm putting those rectangular and other things before sending to the FC. So in a sense, I am reducing further drastically so that I do not miss, so that I do not take any unnecessary things in my one. Then in case I miss something, I'm giving another opportunity by considering all other different kinds of rectangular masks around those salient features, because salient features has come to very reduced, few hundreds, a few tens only. After that, I'm putting that one. That's why I'm getting fast and accurate results also. The yeah, attention mechanism also, something like that. To some extent, that one. And here I'm considering the video as a totality, 
but others they consider as an image wise wise image wise had had temporal so so i need the temporal temporal domain since we have the do, uh, knowledge uh, available from the data why don't you use it just one approach but it is it's not all still you can, can improve it how do how do you define other kinds of granules just is a basic research it is getting cited also Sorry, atmospheric data. Uh, no, adversarial attack. Ha ha ha. With uh, that condition. Have you will you please be, be seated. Yes. Ha. Have you tested the, this? Uh, the no, no, not the, yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. Data getting also some problem. Na? If real life data, I say, it's a, it is just still planned data. I cannot give, it, give it the, this data to, to anybody. Within one, one of our, our still, still plans. One. <laughs> And then from data, you have to just generate your training set, training data also. No? It's, a, it's, a, it's a good amount of work you have to do, training data also. If you want to publish good paper, then you have to little bit work hard. And then with the help of that, you can publish good data. That is what I'm about. Target based journals also. Based journals. Then it will be easier also for your attitude will be also different. If your target should be always high, high, uh, let them get rejected, but you will have one. One of the slides you showed about the London Metro. Ha, ha, ha. I saw one anomaly there. I, I don't know whether I am right or wrong. What is that? Uh, the Boundary box. Boundary box, we are giving some approximation. The, the guy is shorter one, the bounding box is too tall. For us, is taking care of the shadow also. Here? No, here, taking not, not the shadow. Boundary box, we are giving, with, it's a prediction. We are giving. Uh, if based on the three, we are giving the fourth where you go, based on the lower and upper approximation, and the boundary boxes coordinate, we are getting some alpha ch change, say point one pixel or two pixels. That's how we are just getting. Shadow is not, not come. Shadow is the depth. Huh? Huh? But other ones, other one I've seen it. Huh? The other one you see, huh? the, Estimation is a uh, little bit, uh, sometimes it is not, not failing also. How does the is now, it's a, in case of putting box, granule is not coming. Granule is coming instead of the identifying the one. Putting box is separately. I am identifying the person in terms of granule first. Mm -hmm. Then I am approximating they are boundary box in terms of based on their displacement acceleration, some approximately point, and then computing the lower end of our approximation and computing the intrinsic entropy. If it's occlusion, we are checking this one. It's just a prediction based on this, this one. Boundary box, you can put always rectangular boundary box. But while putting boundary box, you have to some estimation. You are giving some the one that next bounding box will be depending on the speed and acceleration. If there is a change in speed and acceleration, then bounding box will be. That is what but is happening. Ha, ha. Going behind the curve, right? Ha, 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 ha. So if there is crossing, sometimes at some point. Time, yes, yes, yes crossing also. Crossing. See, you are basically, yes, when you are just like the when you are walking through one, some cycle or roads, go estimating that expecting that you will be on the just same speed and same direction. If you suddenly change, then cause causes accident, right? <coughs> always, the, always that, that's how it happened. When you walk, you, you are expecting that some lady are going on the side, if there's speed, you can force. But suddenly it's a change. So, so this also here, you, you just get down from the metro, 
slowly, and then suddenly you start, you become fast. So then tracker is a little bit hesitant to to predict one fast prediction. Prediction. You need to put some more mathematics also. Also here. Yeah. Just is an approximation using lower and upper. How can you find this kind of estimation? Yeah. Basically, I have given some new concept in terms of, of, of granular computing. Definitely, now you can enrich this concept by borrowing others others' ideas. Also, yeah. this is a new theory. We can tune the parameters. Tune the parameters. I am giving this is uh, strength and weakness. I am telling. If you need approximation, this one, this is a good approach you are giving. You are based on the granulation. If you need the final, you go ahead from, from, from just at that point. <laughs> prediction, this is a prediction. Previous one was classification, rule-based classification. There we use that granular program for that correction. Correction, here also we need to have some kind of correction mechanism. Similarity would be more. Now, granule means, in a naive sense, clusters. Let's Cluster. consider that one. Cluster. That means group of similar objects, group of group, uh, group, uh, uh, clump of indistinguishable objects, which you cannot discriminate with the help of given attributes. If number of attributes increases, then it could be some of them could be discriminated. So, given the number of attributes. This is the data where I cannot discriminate, so I consider them as a one, one entity instead of going by separate thing. That's it. When you look at the Professor Lakhvi Jade's membership function, membership function is a granulation. Granulation in the feature space. Right? If you, he has paper. If similarly, with the uh, 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 Scobro, yeah, from the Professor Paulak, he said, said defined over a granular domain. Mathematicians, they do not bother about those things. They go, go by the, their way. But as an engineering point of view, since I had a background in pattern negotiation, he was posting, I know the what is uncertainty. So that point struck me first. The lower and upper is uncertainty. Yeah. So then we consider the how can it be useful in an image when you uh, 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 discretize x axis y axis. You are discretizing. And they are similar intensity can be, can be considered as a gannu. Similar color can be considered as a gannu. Depending on the threshold, you can granule size and one. And lowest level, a pixel is a granule. Yes, pixel is a, is a granule, granule, right? So, in the same image, I can see the you know, concept of granularity. I can see the concept of roughness also. also. So, I can uncertainty. If you can bring probabilistic uncertainty, whether the probability occurs of a pixel or, or level, that will be even more, more, more powerful. So that's how I, I thought, or I, I just consider my object in just my domain. Mathematicians think, think other way. Yeah. Mathematicians think, think other way. So granule also, that's why I said, Professor Rajan Glass, it's a feature space, itself says granule as a features. He says granule, granules. But never, nobody uttered about the granular or computing. Computing. And in real life problems, when you have ambiguity, it is better to consider it's a granule. That helps uh, membership, rough set, probability. See, overlapping you cannot uh, avoid. Incomplete information you cannot avoid. Right? Obscure information you cannot avoid. And that means data, whether it's small, medium, or big. Always you have got this kind of uncertainty, incompleteness. Eh? So our objective should be to check. We cannot remove, but we can reduce. We can handle. We can represent. We can gain more information out of that. So when we had image processing, black and white, we had limitation. Now we had 
we cannot go further. Then we had colored image. We have resolved many issues because of the color. Then we had depth image feature. So you have introduced many more inf information. Uh, so unless when you do not have those, what you will do? Uncertainty comes from because of this. No? Given the attributes, we have some limitation. Thank you, sir. Your thank you very much. Full of brilliant, valuable information. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Researchers like us. Now I request uh, Professor Kamtaj Kumar sir to felicitate our chief guest. Uh, felicitation is already done, na? No? Felicitation is already done. <laughs> Another felicitation? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. With this, we come to the end of our first session. Now, rest of the session will resume online after lunch. And the links are already sent to all the participants. Seven years back. Now, 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 now we should improve. Seven years back.